was almost 60 years ago that a roll opposite Humphrey Bogart into Have and Have Not turned her into an overnight sensation. Well, six day, decades later, she remains active in film, theater, oh. and television. And she can even call herself an accomplished uh, author. In 1980, Ms. Bacall won the National Book Award for her autobiography called By Myself. She has since updated that work. The new title is By Myself and Then Some. Lauren Bacall. Can I call you Lauren? Yes, or I updated my life. You did? You have a new <laughs> life to talk about? You don't understand. It's been 25 years since you wrote the book, so I mean, clearly that's a long period of time. What did you want to accomplish in updating the book? Well, it wasn't so much what I wanted to accomplish. It kind of happened because I forget who it was, but they thought, gee, it would be a great idea to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the publication of your autobiography because this whole generation has not seen it. There are two generations probably that haven't, have never read the book or didn't even know about it. And I thought about it for a while. At first I thought, oh God, who cares by now? You know, nobody wants to know anything more about me. And that there were those 25 years left out that perhaps I would have something to say. It puzzles me though that you say, who cares, I mean, about me. I mean, you're, you're part of Hollywood royalty. And, and I'm, I don't mean that as a, you know, throwing compliments at you, but your life has been fascinating in terms of the relationships you've had and your rise through the Hollywood system. Well, I came in at the tail end of the Hollywood system, unfortunately. I mean, you know, with the be beginning of six months before television, we had its ugly head. <laughs> Sorry about that. And, and terrified all the, all the heads of studios. But... Um, no, I'm, listen, I just never think of myself as anyone caring. I just think uh, that I hate to talk about myself so much, and I think, God, aren't they fed up with it? Well, then let me do the honors. Let me talk about you a little bit, because one of the things in the original portion of the book, that uh, kind of a driving force in the book is Humphrey Bogart, who yes. you were married to, and you talk about meeting on the set of the movie, and you say there was no thunderbolt That's when right. you first met, which I found interesting. Yes, it was odd, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I, 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 there just wasn't. It, first of all, he was a married man, and, and I, and I was a kid. Right. You were 19, he was I 45. I was 19, and I thought, God, I mean, 19, I was just this guy. And I was, he was never a hero of mine. Leslie Howard was my dream. As the romance began to blossom, did you have anybody around you, friends, who said, this is wrong, don't do this. Don't get involved with a guy who's 45. No, but some members of my family were, they only cared about my future and my happiness, and they, and they just said, just think about it carefully. If that makes you happy, okay, but just remember that he has already ha experienced a lot of life, and you have not even begun, and all of those things, were, which actually were things that always worried him. Let me read you something you write in the book. He was a gentle man. Never in my life had or has a man cared so much for me, wanted so much to protect me, surrounded me with life's joys. No one has ever written a romance better than we lived it. That's wow. true. Isn't oh, it wow. wonderful to be able to, you say no one cares about your life. That's that right there you can't have to care about. Well, I know, no. I mean, it's just that, I, I mean, that was so many years ago. I was so, I was such a child. I was so lucky to have had him you know, to have had that life and had that romance and had the, the whole, everything that happened to me at once at the age of 19. He passed away in 1957 of cancer. And you, you write in the book that you briefly were engaged to Frank Sinatra, oh, but yes. that you knew that could never work. Why? Well, first of all, I mean, Frank was very much a womanizer, you know. He was very busy from going from room to room. And I, that would never have set well with me. I would never have put up with that. And, um, I mean, Frank, when I met him, was at the peak of his career, his singing career, and that is the most seductive thing in the world. When an old blue eyes looks at you and is singing songs only to you. How can you pretty resist? Pretty hard to resist. And I also was very vulnerable and was just somehow hoping that my life would go on. I just wanted it to continue because, you know, you have a feeling that when, when the center of your life has gone, you think your life is over. And I, because I had these two little children, I just felt somehow, somehow it's got to go on. And Frank was there and he was very attentive and, and we had a lot of fun together until we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you write in the, in the new chapters about some of the people you've lost Oh, in the I last know. several years, people Too like many. Roddy McDowell, Gregory Peck, Catherine Hepburn, Jason Robards, who you were 
married to for a while, Adolph Green. How do you remain optimistic in a period of time where you're losing so many friends and peers? Well, I don't think I'm a born optimist, actually. But I just think I'm hanging on for dear life, <laughs> hoping that I'm going to last. I always look at the obits to see the numbers, you know, and I think, oh, good. Well, I'm not 96 yet. <laughs> what I, I have a little more time. You write in the book, I realize that I've lived a long time, but still not enough to suit me. So what would you like to accomplish? What, what, what's out there? What do you want to accomplish? I still want to have a great part in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting offers? Well, I never stop working, it seems. I have worked constantly. I mean, I have, I'm in two movies that haven't been released this year. You still love happened. it as much when you're in front of the camera? I do. I tell you, I like it better in a way because I'm more relaxed than I used to be. I used to be so tense and so nervous all the time that I just was thrilled to get through it. Anybody who likes to know about acting and Hollywood and just great stories and romance will want to read this. And, and Lauren Bacall, what a pleasure to always have you here. It really is. Come back and see us more often. I'm so happy to see you again, Matt. Thank you. I appreciate that. We're not going to wait so many years next time. Next year. Same time, same place. Same time, same place, when we won't mention my age. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Before you Sorry say to hello. do that right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> great having you here. Thank and you. if you'd like to read an excerpt of my, by myself and then some, you can go to our website at today.msnbc.com. And we're back in a moment. This is Today on NBC.